All right, we're back. Another week of Tabletop Adventures. Last time, we left our adventurers in a kind of precarious situation. Uh, they are, or I guess I should say, Pervents is trying to infiltrate a pub where the Red Brand thieves who are terrorizing town are sort of holed up. And the way that she's doing this is they've kind of hoarded these thieves, they've hoarded all the ale in town, and Pervents has disguised himself as a ale delivery man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And apparently when Pervence uses the keyword murder, Hogger <laughs> is going to That's correct. come crashing in and resolve the situation in a typical Hogger way. Um, From the rear. <clears throat> uh, Lilia and Andri, meanwhile, yes. hiding, pretending to be ale inside of the wagon. Awesome. Yes, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shortchange you guys. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Trojan horse. Trojan, Trojan horse. horse. Yeah. No, I think this is a really. I think this is by far the best <laughs> plan you guys have had. Thank you. <laughs> it's the only plan we've ever had. Yeah. Uh, Elephant is challenge rating four. As you uh, have seen, we have a new player with us. I'm very excited about. He really, really I'm wanted little, to do this, and I'm it was excited. tough to get him in. I'm excited. When we were in the cave. Um, and it probably just would have added even more chaos. But now that we're in town, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to sort of let the other players resolve this sort of infiltration scenario. And then once we do, uh, Max will show up and we'll, we'll get him in the group. But uh, Max, it's great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about your character. Uh, do I say my name or do I have to role play the name part? I mean, say your character name, yeah. OK. Uh, my character's name is Taylor DeSwift. Um, and he is an alchemist, level two. And he is a sage. Uh, his alignment is chaotic good, and he's an elf. Mm. And he's very wise. So <clears throat> I kind of went a little nuts with your character. Yeah. And because an alchemist doesn't exist in the fifth edition mm. book. Uh, whoa. So yeah. I went back to 3.5 and saw the alchemist there. And the things that I liked, I kept. The things that I didn't like, I made up. So cool. <laughs> you have. A few potions on you, mm -hmm. uh, most of which are entirely made up. So one of them is Sunrod. It's this large, thick, heavy black stick that when you snap the end of it, it glows a really bright orange that illuminates 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Another flare, <coughs> Sunrod. Like magic cool. flare. Yeah, like Can you brand these, people? This is, that's a level zero uh, alchemic first thing. first question. <laughs> no, you can't burn people. You brand you burn their eyes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's, that is a great question. Uh, the it's next one, I don't have a name for it, but it's mm. it's a glowing neon blue potion right. that when you drink it or you throw it at something, they glow blue. So you can either use it to mark enemies or you can use it, again, for more illumination. Blue the, goo. We, blue it is now goo. affectionately referred to as blue goo. Um, blue goo. Blue the goo. next blue spell goo. is called chalk, and this one I went a little nuts with. Kay. When you drink chalk, anyone that drinks chalk, their view of the world is suddenly distorted. Everything is grayscale and a little bit hazy. If you've ever seen the race in um, Lord of the Rings, like yeah. when you're in the Wraith world, it kind of oh. looks like that. Cool. So what it is, is you can suddenly create words with your mind. You can create, uh, and you can communicate with your mind. And basically what it is, is like if I was to think yes. the word hello, it would appear in the air, out of the ether. Only How, if you've drunk it. Only if you drink it. So if, if you're sneaking into a place, or let's say you want to communicate vital information, you could be like, hey, Lilia, drink this potion. And as long as you both drink it, you can communicate this way without using any body Whoa. language or vocal mm -hmm. stuff. But there's like an actual physical range, right? So the words would appear, and you would actually have to physically see those words while you're no. in the world. No, so it, the way it, like, that it works is if you want Lilia to see it, it does, you are not concerned with time or space. Even if you are at the, at the other ends of the world, as long as you both have drank the potion, you can you can see it. So it's kind of crazy. Wacky. Yeah. How much I wanna, stuff do we have? I want to, he has one potion of it. How, well, I'll get there. I'll right. get there. It's the uh, more offensive potion is called, it's just acid. So when you, it's a lot less creative. <laughs> but when you throw it at an enemy and it damages them, you do 1d6 damage, and then the next round, and it doesn't kick in until the next round, it does an extra 1d4 of damage. Mm, so it has okay. uh, a little bit more persistent effect than most things. Now the final potion is not as crazy as chalk, but it's, it's interesting. It's called smelling salts. And I kind of made this 
more powerful than it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You guys seem to go unconscious a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so what smelling salts does is, if you are unconscious and you are exposed to the smelling salts, you are suddenly up and ready to fight. However, put me down for some of those. I know. If That's you are if you are in the the process of rolling to see whether you live or die, it has the same effect. However, you must within 24 hours either rest or receive some sort of healing. If you don't, you will fall back unconscious after 24 hours. So it's basically what it is. The, the smell gets into your nose and it fucks with your brain. It's basically like a drug that it's sort of masking the pain. Mm. Skooma. And if you're in conscious but stable, it's strong enough that it wakes you up. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, crystal meth slinger. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, if I die <laughs> again, that's going to be it. Oh, right? It can't be smelling salt So if you're, if you're dead, yeah. if you are dead dead, mm -hmm. you can't, smelling salt has no effect. Okay. It's only unconsciousness that sure. it affects. Um, now, Max, you have also two potions of cure wounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, which you can distribute or use on yourself as you see fit. Now you have uh, enough components in your pouch on, on your person right now mm -hmm. to make two level zero spells and one level one spell. And I'm saying spell, but I mean potion. Mm -hmm. So you can either make another burn acid or another smelling salt, and you can make two more of the other three. Okay. Uh, oh, also cure wounds is, a, is another option if you okay. can make another one of those. So. Mm -hmm. um, how do I actually put it together? Is it just like, hey, I want to put uh, a potion together? Does it require some time? Does it require a roll? Or do I just like definitely potion? So each potion, because they're not like super high level, each potion takes an hour to make. Okay. Um, it it depends. Like I might have to bend that a little bit because I think you know, especially with your experience, you should be able to make some things quickly, especially if you have the components, but. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, yes, and I also have an idea about how we're going to handle him getting more components, but we don't have to go into that right now. Hmm. We need to we need to get started on the adventure. Does anyone else have any questions about Max's character? Oh, you didn't say your backstory, the most important yeah. thing. Yeah, tell us oh, why you're backstory. here. Um, well, I am a scholar in the School of Alchemy, and my whole journey is to find the Philosopher's Stone, but not in the typical well, not with the typical reason of trying to find it, like, um, or immortality, or trying to turn everything into gold. I'm trying to find the Philosopher's Stone to figure out the mechanics of how the world works. Essentially, God's domain. That's what I'm trying to find. A man of the Philosopher's Stone. Yeah. And, uh... I just got kicked out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and it's... <laughs> So they're very grand ambitions, Noble. Um, but he's also, because he is so obsessed with trying to find knowledge, he's quite blunt and rude and has no room for social niceties. Oh, uh, we got one of those. So, yeah, you'll fit yeah. in well. Yeah, <laughs> we all hate society. <laughs> so, Except for perverts. <laughs> oh, uh, there was one question that you asked that I didn't really address. Uh, mm. When you are making these things, I'm not going to say, you have to make it this way with this flask and this liquid. Mm. That's up to you. Like, Be as descriptive and as visual as you want. OK, cool. so perverts on the wagon with the horse reins in hand driving toward the pub. You guys are in the barrels. You two are in the we're barrels. in the barrels now? I thought you were in the barrels hiding. We're, we're in the wagon. Hiding under yeah, tarp. We're under oh, you're tarp in the wagon, not necessarily yeah. in the barrels. I have my, my bow is You drawn. should be in the, be in the barrel. OK. I'll be in the barrel. Extra level Andrew can be in the barrel. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to be in the barrel. Sorry, I just thought you were. I, I can't you fit in the barrel. You should be in the barrel. I can fit in the barrel. It's good. Hogger, you are Down the street. In, a, in a building about 30 feet away. Mm -hmm. it might be a different distance than I said last time. I'm 50, sorry. 50, you said last time. 50. Look at that memory. Nice. Uh, <coughs> 50 feet away. <coughs> Waiting for the word murder. <laughs> Pervins, since you are the one that's, that's likely going to make first contact with these thieves, I'm going to describe the scene to you, and then you can act accordingly. So, you roll up to this pub, the Sleeping Giant. And it is, it is dilapidated, decrepit. 
It is run down the, the board. The floorboards are all splintered. There's, there's like mugs with beer dripping out of them littered in the, on the porch and on the front lawn. The lawn has not been kept up. It's brown. It's dead. It's dead grass. And uh, the shingles on the roof are falling off. Um, and you see three thieves sitting on the porch of this pub. They're clearly all drunk. They're all laughing. It's a very, like, deep, drunk laughter. And they, you can see that they all have leather armor on. What does a deep, drunk laughter sound like? Sure. It's, it's like, it's slurred. Like give the, the give, us, give us an sure. audible. Sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, it's like. Yeah, that paints a picture. Now I'm in the zone. Okay. Yeah. Pushing me, I like it. <laughs> All right, uh, so you overhear their conversation. It's grisly. It's not a nice thing that they're talking about. Apparently, that poor innkeeper that you guys met last time mm -hmm. um, has a daughter. And apparently she is being held at this pub and they're talking about how they had her their way with her last night. Doesn't sound good. Uh, they're, they're, they're using very foul language, which I will get into in a moment. Uh, the one thing I wanted to say before we start really rolling is this week, last week I, I started making changes to the story. This week I'm, I'm just like wildly going in a different direction. So from this point forward, uh, we're only barely referencing the pre-written campaign. From here on out, it's just kind of an original story. If it doesn't work, land. we can immediately switch back, but I thought this would be more fun, so. We should also mention, for people that didn't realize that we've all leveled up to two. Yeah, We have a little important. bit more hit points and some new moves and stuff like that. Yeah, yes, uh, and we can, as those things are we used, we can just use them if we use them. Yeah, level two. Thank you, Ian, that was good. All right, <clears throat> yeah. Pervance, how do you approach the scene? Uh, Pervance rolls up in his with the wagon he stops the wagon in front of the porch. He has his disguise on. He himself is role playing at this point. He <laughs> wants to be an assertive presence. He lowers himself from the wagon and he struts over to the men and he says, A you who? Only the, so, <laughs> setting the scene here. Oh, also, well, we'll get there in a moment. Too many things. So, two of the thieves are, like, kind of next to each other on the top stair, and then one thief, who's clearly the most drunk, is like, half of his ass is kind of on the bottom stair, half of it's on the ground. He's like, he's like, kind of sitting, kind of laying down. He's the only one that acknowledges your presence. And he, like, with one eye, he turns to you and he goes, Oh, that's a fucking halfling. What, do you, what, does, fuck, what, does, what does this fucking halfling want? I don't see any halflings around here. I'm just here to bring the ale. I'm the ale delivery guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he, the thief turns to his friends. He says, hey. Hey, look at this little shit. Dwarf's got a mouth on him. <laughs> <laughs> Not happy. Not happy. Well, hang on a minute there, fellas. There's no need for that kind of language. You look a little inebriated, and I'm here to make you even more so. Would you care for some of my ale? <laughs> I ain't never met a little shit like this. Why can't you just speak plainly? Are you saying you got some beer? This is my voice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you gentlemen so kindly allow me to bring my wagon around yonder so as to make my delivery? Um, so one of the two thieves uh, that is on the top stair, <clears throat> the one on the right, 
is the least inebriated, and he, and he sort of has the sense to ask the question, ale delivery man? Never been an ale delivery man <laughs> Where did you come from? This seems awfully suspicious. <laughs> Well, I make this delivery every week, so I could ask you the same question, okay. pal. You are trying, so roll uh, <laughs> for deceit. Perfect oh, says no. plus three deception. This is good. This will what, be fine. Which, which one are you rolled? 20? Yeah. Keep in mind that he's drunk, so. Oh, Seven. Plus what? Three. three. Ten. That's a ten, but it doubles, right? No, it's not a spell. No, oh, only fuck. permanence rule only applies to spells. Um, the the thief s believes you. He says, <sighs> "Yeah, I mean, we, we we have a we have a lot of ale. It makes sense. I I wouldn't fucking give a shit about a halfling anyway, so I probably didn't even notice you." Ouch. <laughs> All right, whatever. Just hurry up. I I don't want to waste any more time talking to your kind. Just deliver the ale and go away. <laughs> Good one, guys. <laughs> 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 and then Pervin starts to take the wagon, I guess, around to where they direct him to. to where it... So all they tell you is to go around the back. Okay. <laughs> As you go around the back of the sleeping giant, um, you see uh, a single back door that is like, one of the hinges is loose and it's kind of already a little bit open. You're assuming that's where they want you to take the ale. You don't know what else is inside the sleeping giant. Hermans, he whispers back to the wagon, what do we do now? Uh, I was looking through the windows as we were coming around. Did I see anything? Uh, Roll a perception check. I think you're gonna you're gonna have to roll high for this. Uh, fourteen total. It, you didn't see anything too useful. You just saw really, really, really dirty tables. Okay. Um, like, you you didn't get a great view of the place. Okay. Open the door and announce yourself. To the people. Yes, you're doing great. Just keep that up. Well, should we try to be secretive? Just deliver the ale. Yeah. Just deliver the ale. Open the door. Announce okay. yourself. Keep it up. Here we go. <clears throat> you hear no response. Go in. No, Permits. Go in. Go, go in. Go in. Stop knocking. If there's no one there, that's even better. I pull the door open. Hello. <laughs> You hear, <coughs> you hear glass fall from somewhere and shatter. Whoa. Someone was not, not expecting you. You hear a, a really gruff voice, even gruffer than from the thieves you heard outside. And, it's, and he says, <coughs> what, what was that? <laughs> Just the old ale delivery guy. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you want it, pal? I want it right next to me. I could go for a drink right now. <laughs> 